all powers and abilities of Shadow explained. How powerful is Sid Kagano from Amity Room Pie? We watched this initial video from him, but this is pretty much like a story summary. But this one, I think he actually goes into describing what I wanted from that video. Let's see. So continuing from where I left off in part 1, I had already covered the full story of Sid Kagino from the anime to the latest volume 4 of the light novel, and now with that, let's go over if his If it has spoilers, we gotta be careful about it. ...to give everyone a better idea of how powerful he actually is. As usual, here's a spoiler warning if you don't want any spoilers regarding Sid's character and the story for the Eminence in Shadow. And don't forget to give the video a like Wait. or subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. Wait! How much spoilers are there? Wait, 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 wait. Now I'm kind of concerned. Wait, is there actually a lot of... How, which one of you have already seen this? There's a, there's a lot of manga panels here, but I think this is pretty much the scenes that we've already seen from the anime itself. As soon as he goes into John Smith stuff, I think I'll skip. We'll be very careful about this one. To start, Kage no Minoru has always been a hardworking person that constantly pushed his own limits physically and mentally by dedicating his life to studying and training in yes. order to become an eminence in the shadows. That's right, while you guys were partying, he was studying the blade. However, due to the limitations of the fragile human body, he could only do so much before he hits a wall that he cannot surpass. But the when nuclear he was bomb. Hit by and reincarnated in another world. Okay, again. We've seen this panel over and over again, but Baldi here's pose. Like, it kind of zooms in too much here, but it, right over here, Baldi's pose, he's just like sticking his gyat out. It's like, what the fuck is going on to the point where you're going like... What are they doing here, hmm? Filled with magic as Sid Kageno, he finally had all the tools needed to achieve his dreams of becoming a true eminence in the shadows. So with knowledge of his previous world and his current world, he was able to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of his training routine, allowing him to develop his masters. This never actually happened, right? Is this just like headcanon? Like this is what he thinks he looks like in the manga? Or are they- Because people said that in the manga, this is a joke panels, right? But like, <laughs> look at him. He's so big. And his head is so small compared to everyone else. And everyone's like, you won't be a background character if you look like this, bro. He's got bigger titties than all the girls in the school right now. He's in the manga. He's, a, he's act. This is actually Sid. This is Sid. In the manga. Straight up. This is what he looks like. <laughs> really? Honed his mind and perfected his abilities to surpass all the limits of a normal human being to reach the what pinnacle the of strength and power, becoming quite possibly- I, I thought that's just a gag! I thought it's just like funny panel, it's not actually what he looks like, but sometimes it'll make him look like that to exaggerate something, but like straight up, it, that, that's just his normal style, like that's his normal mode, okay? One of, if not, the most powerful individuals in the series. So what are some of the skills and abilities that allow Sid to become such an overpowered individual? I need to understand the slime power because the slime magic is something that's been overlooked in the anime and I hope this video actually explains it. For starters, with the addition of magic, he was able to push the limits of his physical conditions to peak superhuman levels. His yeah. entire body was capable of withstanding various forms of attacks and even allowed him to break materials like concrete and steel or even the bodies of highly durable opponents. He could even control his body to avoid attacks. Oh yeah, using this is the resurrection scene, right? This is the resurrection scene where the terrorists were invading the school and he like restarted his heart somehow by itself, right? He like stopped it, but he restarted or it. Damaging areas containing vital organs, as well as affecting the biology of his body to counteract and develop immunities towards certain harmful substances like poison or deadly gases. But aside from that, with the use of magic, he could also no, achieve explain the magic though. speed, like moving so insanely fast that he was able to live after images and no one could even perceive his movements if- so the superhuman speeds is magic, like, like, do they actually reinforce this? Does a magic reinforce his body to move that fast? Or is this just like his physical ability? Like, is that a separate thing or is it buffed by magic? He really went into his max speed. And one of the speed abilities that he developed was called Quick Flash, which allows him to move almost instantly. I wonder if this is the same one that he used against Beatrice, but we've seen the flash step, sorry, this would be called like a frame step. Only ...to any place within his reach in less than one second, making it seem like he's teleporting. Although Dude, the, f the, f the flash step is one of the coolest shit in anime that's been reused in shown in anime over and over and over. Like, who knows how many, like, who even knows where the origin of the flash step became? But like, every anime can reuse it and it'll always be not, it it'll always be hype. So even without relying on magic to boost his speed, he can still easily make sudden changes and precise last minute movements in such a natural way the to neck dodge crack. the attacks of his enemies that observers might think it was just a coincidence. 
Now, other than strength and speed, Zid also trained his five senses to beyond what a normal human is capable of. What? And within Shadow Garden itself, he probably only loses to Delta and Zeta simply because of their heightened the senses as beasts. Smell. Yeah. Regardless, his senses were still considered to be so insanely good that he can easily detect the presence of enemies no matter how skilled they are at hiding. He could even enhance his senses with magic. Why do I gotta put Milam in a thong like that, man? Come on. Why do I, why do I gotta put the lolly in a G-string like that? Come on, man. Jake, to distinguish small details on objects or people, like when he was able to tell the difference between the counterfeit bills made... Wait, could he actually tell? Because in the anime, I sort of got the entire point of the anime scene where Yukimi gives, you know, John Smith the counterfeit bills and the, the fake and the real one. And he's like, hmm, how do you like these? And John was like, hmm, wow. These are great. And Yukimi's like, do you know which one's the real one? And John's like, um, clearly the one with lesser quality, right? Right? So I thought the implication there was he had no fucking clue. He could not tell at all. He could tell, but he didn't know which one was real or fake. How does that make sense? How, if he could tell, how could he not know which one was real or fake? I thought, I thought the entire, because like that joke gag then repeated it into the second part in Getan's office, where Getan and his baldy, he was like, he showed him the counterfeit bills, and, get, and he was like, so, can you tell which one's the real one? And Getan's like, um, the, the lower quality one? I thought that was the implied meaning. By Yukime and those of the Mitsugoshi company, despite not knowing what they looked like. However, there was a much more extreme application of his enhanced senses, which led to him developing a special skill called bionic perception of time. Whenever he what? activates this, this is an actual thing? Like, this is a name technique. Bionic perception of time. This is straight up light novel manga material. This exists? Like, he's not just making this shit up, right? But this is, I guess, whenever, like, in close, like, in, in really intense moments like this, where time seems to, like, a, a second seems to last, like, 10 minutes like this scene. This is bionic perception of time. This skill through magic, Sid can basically perceive everything that is currently happening around him in a way that looks like time has come. So basically the showering gun. Completely stopped. And it okay. seems like no matter how powerful or skilled the opponents are, he can easily activate this technique to counter them. He has been doing this since the beginning. Like, against Claire, this is the one of the first times we did see it. Like when he was able to dodge the attack of Beatrix, the goddess of war, making it look like he slipped. That said, through his years of training and combat experience, he managed to develop a different type of sense, something similar to a warrior instinct of fighting spirit. What? This is apparently a skill that can only be achieved by the most elite of warriors and what is those it? who have fully mastered the art of battle. It's a skill that allows Sid to understand and learn about the opponents he's facing, whether it is their personality, identity, or emotions without ever needing- He can understand and learn about his opponents simply through fighting. I guess this kind of plays on to the conversation that Annie News is talking about, right? How Sid always observes his opponents to see if they can have a conversation, and then that's in act ultimately in order to make a counterattack. But like by fighting, he can understand his opponent personality. I okay. Needing to have a direct conversation with them, basically learning everything there is to know about a person simply through the way they fight. For example, when he was fighting the Wish of Calamity Aurora okay. during the Trial of the Goddess, he could somewhat feel and understand her personality through their battle, and it really impressed and excited him. But he became disappointed after realizing that she wasn't actually present and it was simply a soulless construct created by the test, so he quickly ended the battle. Because oh. according to Sid, if an opponent doesn't have a will of their own or a soul, the battle will become boring since he can easily predict their movements and counter accordingly like during his fight with the hero Olivier. I would never have known that in the anime only, right? I never knew he'd actually thought of it like that. Like, he has such, like, a, uh, an honorable way of thinking. Like, he really, like, treasures the sanctity of a tool. But I could, I thought he was just fucking closing his eyes here. Just, you know, just to be tuny, extra. It's like, oh, I haven't, like, unlocked my rest of my powers. And I don't know. I thought he was just shitting on people. But I didn't realize that he actually thought that way about Olivier and, uh, and Aurora there. Yeah. Now, thanks to his knowledge of fighting techniques of his previous life, Sid easily mastered the new fighting techniques of his current world and quickly became proficient in both swordsmanship as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat from a very young age. In terms of his swordsmanship skills, his technique has gone beyond excellent and into the realms of transcendent, but at its core, his fencing was still considered to be ordinary. That's because instead of relying on talent, he only focuses on the fundamentals and his proficiency is simply a byproduct of all his hard work and dedication throughout Alexia mentions that too, right? Because like his swordsmanship is so basic and simple, it, but that's intentional, right? Alexia's swordsmanship is also the same, but she doesn't really understand the same way. Because Sid's way of simple is like min-max, right? So efficient, you cut off all useless movements to the point where every swing is 
again, just optimized. So it looks boring, but it's perfect. About the years. He was so insanely skilled that he could simultaneously fight and then easily defeat Beatrix and Iris Midgar, considered to be both of the most Who's stronger here though? Beatrix or Iris? Is there a power gap in between these two? Or are they pretty much the same? Because against Sid, when they were 2v1ing, I couldn't really tell. Because Sid is so strong that he makes everyone else he's fighting kind of look all the same. But if he, Sid wasn't there, then maybe there'd be a bigger gap we could tell between the two. Accomplished spell swords Beatrix's? As for his hand-to-hand -hand fighting ability, it's probably at a similar level to his swordsmanship skills. And during his fight with the Great Wolf Gatan, you can tell how strong Sid actually okay, is. Okay, now, 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 blah, 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 blah. I'm not, I'm not, okay, okay. We're gonna skip that scene. Oh, I did not see anything, but he does fight Gatan. Uh, it's not really a spoiler, though. We, he does fight Gatan, but okay. Gonna, gonna skip Bad that. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, case, didn't see that. Sid also possesses such an insane amount of magical power that it shocked even the Wish of Calamity Aurora. And unlike the typical red color of most magic users, his magical powers were so it's potent purple. and refined that it's purple in color and resembles. So even the color, and like you, whenever he did, I'm atomic, right? Not only was it purple in color, but look at this, it resembles circuitry, like these lines here, right? It's supposed to like, so only super refined magic suddenly resembles circuitry. This is kind of giving me Mahoka vibes. You know how Mahoka everything is like science into magic, right? I don't know, this kind of reminded me of stuff like that when I saw all these different lines. I didn't know if this was just like random aesthetics or if it actually had meaning to it. So I guess it actually does have meaning to it. A circuitry. But even with such a large amount of magical power... He Aurora DS, exactly. Aurora did have circuitry too. But it was red. And that scene never actually happened in the manga or the light novel, right? So it was like anime-only content. So that was still one of the most best... Like that was, that was definitely the highlight of the episode for me over Recovery Atomic. But I, I guess... Her circuitry and the red color, does that actually mean anything? So if red is red, like, if purple is the most refined color, then maybe red is like almost there, you know, but not quite there. I don't really know. Maybe they're just retconning this shit. I don't fucking know. He could still effortlessly suppress and contain his magic so that no one was even capable of detecting his true powers and his understanding of magic was so precise that even in situations where magic is completely sealed off, he, he can, can still, still use find it. ways to counter yeah. the effects. For example, when the Cardo Diablos used an artifact to seal the magic of his school, he was the only one able to use magic, and another case was inside the- These slime suits, man. One of the best things about the slime suits is that they can just like disappear like this, bro. It's so much fan service. Now, do any of these girls still exist in the Shadow Garden Girls? Like, have we seen these faces, or was this like a one episode thing and done? Because like, obviously we can't like focus so much on the other girls. Like, we have the Seven Shades, and then we have like the 8 to 25, the names, you know, the important ones, but then, I- Do we- I wonder if the author actually brought these characters back or if they were just like a one-time thing. The sanctuary and he was able to use magic after tempering his state. He even discovered the ability to share and give some of his magical powers with others. Okay, this part is very important. Share magic power with others. So there's a clear difference in the power of the seven shades versus everyone else. The seven shades were directly f healed, right? The mana overload was healed by shadow, but he also trained them. People are saying that when the possessed genes or the possessed blood is cured by shadow, then it's a different type of bestowing power versus everyone else. Oriana also is a special case because her overload, you know, mana overload was also directly fixed by shadow. The other girls of that joined, they didn't really have the mana overload problem, right? How does that work? I'm not really sure. I don't think they did. Which, funny enough, he only learned after accidentally healing Alpha's demon okay. possession. And whenever someone receives his magical power, their overall okay. magic and physical capabilities are greatly enhanced. And if so, if we just heal the possessed blood overload mana, then they are automatically just powered up as well. If they are suffering from demon possession, it will be instantly healed as well. He okay. recently used this in the anime to save Rosalina and yeah. give her the power to save her kingdom. That's why I have so much more faith in Oriana than every other girl. Because, like, not only is she one of the most important characters in Season 1 side characters, but also, like, because she got directly healed by Shadow, right, she has more potential to be really strong, right, to rise up to probably be not one of the seven shades, but probably join, like, the 8 to 25 numbers, right, the, un the named numbers, right? Now, aside from that, he also came up with many ingenious ways of utilizing magic for combat and in his everyday life, like walking on water, running at superhuman speeds, gaining the ability to fly, and many more. Although the funniest is how he uses Spider-Man. Yes, this is what, what. How do they do this? Like when I watch shit like this in Eminence and Shadow, I don't think to myself, "How did he achieve this using kind of magic?" No, I just think it's a goofy anime. 
I'm not gonna ask, I'm not gonna bother asking a question for it. There's probably not much, it's not that deep, you know? It's magic to stick to walls or other surfaces because it seems like he always uses this particular ability to avoid people like his sister Claire Cagino or Rose Oriana. As for more combat-oriented use of magic, Sid managed to develop a few special techniques like his signature move, I Am Atomic, which yes. is basically the combination of all his hard work to finally defeat his last obstacle. But how did he actually become atomic though? How did he become nuclear? So he just gained power that rivals like an atomic bomb, I guess. But how, how did he exactly do that? You know? How, in, in which ways did he use magic to achieve that power? I guess there's no point asking questions like this. Obstacle, nuclear weapons. He essentially accumulates all his mana to a single okay. point on his weapon, then releasing it to deliver a devastating stride to this. But I guess at the end of the day, you know, big enough mana gathering can create an explosion that is pretty much on the power of a, like, a nuclear bomb. So like... Yeah, I, that's a decent enough explanation. Like, sometimes there's no point asking into such details about powers like this. But I am curious, and some shows actually do go into the mechanics. Like, Mahoka, for example. They'll fucking explain so much that I have no idea what's going on. Mahoka is one of the few animes where they do so much explanation of the mechanics of what's going on in the magic. But at the same time, I understand less because of the explanations. You know, it's just like... You're telling me words, but it's not going through my head. I'm like reading it, but I'm not understanding it. My brain power is not good enough to reach that show, man. Disintegrate everything in the vicinity, similar to a nuclear explosion, minus the radiation. Also, whenever he activates this technique, he can project a barrier to isolate the areas. Mm. And so again, how did Alexia actually survive the I'm Atomic, you know? People are like, what the fuck? She was right beside a nuclear attack, but... This rain, this like purple, you know, seal, right? It was, she cut it off, right? So even though the blast zone was right there because she was outside, it doesn't really damage her. We can go with that. It's not a big deal. Anything outside would not be affected by the attack. Even creative variations to this technique, like I am the orange atomic. Mm. This is exactly the same. So people were saying I am the all range atomic. Is now, I don't know. Cause like these are random TikTok comments or YouTube comments. Like, do they know what the fuck they're talking about? I'm not really sure, but people are saying that I'm the all range atomic is basically, uh, what's it called? It's like AOE. It's like, it spans beyond realm because Shadow was kind of like in a different place. You know, like she, we were not in the real world. We were in a different realm. So all range somehow broke that realm gap or some shit people are saying stuff like that i don't know if that's actually true but it isn't limited by a barrier and will annihilate everything within a certain range in all directions it wait similar to i'm atomic but it's more destructive as there is no barrier and fires at all directions the all range is basically i didn't realize all range atomic was actually that strong holy shit i should not be have we used this ever after that i don't think so maybe we'll save it for a big moment in the future in all directions he used this to completely destroy the sanctuary in limworm when he was fighting against the multiple clones of the hero olivier there's another one called i am recovery atomic and this can heal people within a certain range but it can also destroy the area albeit with less destructive power so it destroys but it heals so it'll heal people but it'll destroy the environment okay power. Sid used this technique during his fight with the Blood King. Uh, okay, okay, I thought we were going to get, get spoilers for a second. To stop a rampage we're fine. While healing his allies in the process. 752, 758 spoilers. Okay, we're coming up, we're coming up. Okay, good luck, good luck, Annex, good luck. Moving on, another technique he developed was known as Magic Threads. And he first okay. created this John Smith. posing as John Smith because he wanted to use a different fighting style from his usual okay. shadow Okay, this is not really spoilers. We know this. We've seen the, the string attack. We've seen this. So now, this allows him to create... Okay, okay. Powerful magical strings that he can manipulate through his fingers, and the strings were so strong that he can easily cut through most materials. And, okay, spoilers! Okay, careful, careful, careful! Skip, 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 okay. Because it's also highly effective at restraining Thank you, NX. Like Thank you, NX. Against members uh, uh, of la, 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 la. That said, although okay. Sid is still a delusional tuning bill, he was actually quite intelligent, being able to understand several complex subjects like commerce, physics, biology, and many more. He even conducted various kinds of research to test the limits of I mean, he's got to be super smart, right? He's, he seems like an idiot, but that's just his character, I think, right? He seems extremely smart. I mean, he was doing the slime experimentation. I want him to talk about that right now. What he's capable of. And one of the products was his invention of the slime bodysuit. Finally! It was made using the corpses of Rimuru's family and because... <laughs> so, we used the corpses of Rimuru's family and... That's how we, so the slime and Eminence and Shadow, we know we're gonna have a collaboration, right? Yeah? Slimes have high magic conductivity, around 99%. You are 
So slime has very high magic conductivity. What does that really mean? Uh, magic can just basically flow through slime at will very well. It's very efficient and therefore... Highly flexible and provided an insane amount of utility. Okay. It also increased the efficiency of the user and boosted their natural abilities. And for Sid who has mastery over magic, he's the only person that can utilize the suit to its fullest potential, being able to manipulate... So the suit not only does it serve for fan service, right? The suit is skin tight slime suits. It's great for fan service, but... Because of its high conductivity, it also amplifies a person's strength. Like their magic powers, everything else gets boosted because of the suit itself. The suit in such creative ways. However, I think his intelligence and knowledge benefited Shadow Garden the most because they were able to take his teachings, developing them into something. So did Shadow actually teach Ada everything? Or did Ada figure everything out by reading books? Because if Shadow actually taught, you know, um, Ada how to do this, then... That's actually quite impressive. That helped their organization to grow. Like how Gamma created the Mitsugoshi company to sell innovative products to help them financially. Or how Ab Technically Shadow did, like Sid did tell Gamma the little details about finance and the economy and how to like, I don't know, <laughs> manipulate currency and stuff like that. There, there was a scene last episode, right? Where we talked about that and she was like, and Beta was like writing notes down. All these kids are just like taking notes of like modern like finance, like tips. Epsilon and Beta both became influential people thanks to his teachings in order to create connections with other people and gather. What teachings? Like I can understand Epsilon learned how to play the piano from Shadow, right? We've seen the Moonlight Sonata being played every time. You telling me Shadow also taught Beta like how to write fanfic? Really? Maybe. That'd be kind of funny though. That'd be actually hilarious if you actually taught Beta how to write fanfic. The information. Also, because Sid personally trained the first seven shadows with all his refined combat techniques, it was not surprising that they would go on to train the other members of the organization. That's mm. why many of the normal members were considered to be above average warriors and outclassed most spell swords in the world. Although among the seven shadows, only Alpha managed to master all the techniques that he taught and is oh. probably the closest to Sid in terms of fighting ability. Even Alpha's, like, do you remember her Alpha's, like, mini I Am Atomic scene against um, the, the homunculi, the monster from episode 5 that released, like, it, like, healed the girl, right? Even that attack, is there, like, an actual technique that Sid taught her how to do that? Because all I see is Alpha show out of nowhere, fucking do three flips in midair, flash her ass, fucking down Excalibur, and then we see her ass once more. And, like, am I asking myself what, how this magic is made? No. I'm thinking to myself, this is really cool. But is there a deeper meaning to it? Did Sid actually teach her how to do that? Next, I want to talk about his obsession in trying to make himself look like a mock character. And although this doesn't really showcase how powerful he is, I think it's still worth mentioning. So obviously, keeping with the eminence in the shadow aesthetic, he had to maintain a public persona and his shadow persona. And because of this, he developed Mopfu, the art of being a background character. How many Mopfu techniques are there? I swear to God, it was like in the triple digits, right? He would say a mafu technique and the number was like in the triple digits, I swear. And there are moves that allow him to appear as mediocre as possible when he's in- Play that scene again. Play that scene again. Hold up. Watch this. Watch this. Character and there are moves that Let me get rid of the subtitles for a second. Do you see this right here? Do you see this right here? Do you see this? Allow him to appear- as mediocre as possible when he's in his public persona. 48? Apparently, there are 48 ultimate forms of mafu. Oh. Shamel, you're Shamel, you're right, you're right. 40, you called it, bro. You called it. But here are two known examples. The first is called Spinning Drill for Bloody Tornado. To this day, this scene, Sid versus Oriana, Mopfu technique. To this date, this is the most viewed TikTok I have on TikTok. I think it's sitting at like 1.7 million. I don't know why this scene was so popular, but it's. I don't know why. He basically times the opponent's attack and when he makes contact, he will leap backwards spinning his body in the process while using blood bags to create a spinning stream of blood. He used this Alright, get fucked. I hate you. I hate everything about you. You're super fucking annoying. I've been ignoring your comments the entire time. This is not a friend therapy session for you. Fuck yourself. Goodbye. Okay, back to the video. Technique during his battle with Rose Oriana. The second one is called 10 Minute Death Heartbreak, where he first uses magic to make sure blood is circulated into his brain while stopping this is his to death. However, this is a high risk move that might actually One more time, one more time, hold up. ...process while using blood bags to create a spinning stream of blood. He used this technique during his battle with Rose Oriana. The second one is called 10 Minute Death Heartbreak, where he first uses magic to make sure blood is circulated into his brain while stopping... So he just restarted the heart though, right? First uses magic to make sure blood is circulating into his brain, then it goes back into the 
into the heart? I think it's hard to simulate death. However, this is a high risk move that might actually kill him if he isn't careful and this proves that Sid is definitely batshit crazy. And, he and this was when magic was not able to be used, right? This is like magic barriers being casted so that Pico couldn't use magic, but he still did it. Right? This move when a cow attack at school and he jumped in front of Rose to protect her. Anyways, that's pretty much all the skills and abilities that actually kill him. <laughs> no, this is, is a careful, technique too. This proves that Sid is definitely batshit crazy. This is a and technique too. Move Wait. When a cow attack at school and he jumped in front of Rose to protect her. Anyways, no oh, man, this tile technique, bro. This gotta be a technique. This has gotta be a name technique, right? That's pretty much all the skills and abilities that Sid Kagano possesses. No, this one too. Video, there's a final ability that I wanted to mention, and it's his absurdly hilarious amount of luck. The real reason behind his overpowered nature. Because no matter what kind of BS he comes up with, it seems like his luck can just ban reality and causing things he say to always come true. For well, that's just. Is that really an ability? Everything just coming true, like the Cult of Diablo story, is that really an ability? I feel like that's just like, uh, the author. That, that, that's just the power of the author, right? He's, he's just writing shit. It's just, I, I, I guess it is an ability. It's like a plot device. Just Sid's always just lucky, whatever he says. Sometimes he just gets lucky. He throws a dart on the map. That's like the opponent's hideout. Like, I, I guess it kind of does make sense. Yeah, yeah. When he first met Alpha and told her about the Cult of Diablos, he had no idea they existed, but somehow everything is said down to every last detail was completely true. And when his sister Claire was kidnapped, Shadow Garden couldn't even locate her. Here we her, go. But he somehow... He throws a dart on the fucking map here, and it's like, wow, that's where he is! ...guess the location despite missing completely. If this isn't the most broken ability in his arsenal, then I don't know what is. And although this is play for laughs... From I think this is called the main character plot armor. I think so. From a story standpoint, it actually makes sense because it can basically be as strong as the plot needs him to be without needing further explanations. And it does make the story quite entertaining, especially when members of Shadow Garden mistakes his sheer dumb luck for his brilliant and insightful yes. wisdom. So the common misunderstandings of what shadow is doing he has no idea what he's doing but all the girls are like wow shadow summer you're so smart i cannot believe you thought of that and shadow's like uh yeah sure sure we'll just play along with that uh-huh uh -huh. even just like even the recent episodes with like uh what's her name you came in just like the misunderstanding of you know john smith is like is that what you really think? And you can be just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And it's just like, these misunderstandings are like one of the best parts. So yes, yeah, Sid Kagino is definitely an overpowered character without a doubt and a complete psychopath. But I have to respect the message that his character represents. Never rely on just talent. Instead, work hard and have determination for the things mm. that you do. Also this is very true, right? Never rely on just talent, right? You need to work hard. You need to work very hard. But obviously, if someone is also talented as you and works just as hard, you know, it's life is not really fair. But he's true. You got to work hard regardless, right? Talent. Instead, work hard and have determination for the things that you do. Also, no matter how delusional his dreams were, he never gave up and continued to pursue his dream. Okay, but can we like take this example of, okay, he never gave up. He had this dream, you know, this challenge to overcome how to defeat a nuclear bomb. So he never gave up on his dreams. And he simply became atomic himself. Now, can we take that and apply that to real life? Well, maybe we can't really approach the level of an atomic bomb. But still, I think there are some good themes that Sid Kagano has. The work ethic and determination, right? But, you know, you know, sometimes you're like, hmm, can we really achieve these things? And I personally found that to be quite inspiring. Here we go. One for the fans. One more. One more. Atomic. Oh! But all in all. Finally, Anime Roompai finally described what I wanted from this video. His part one, you know, didn't really tell me in detail about how strong he is, what kind of different powers he had, but this video actually did. Please go sub to his channel if you haven't, you know, like his videos. And by the way, we do these reactions live on stream, 7 a.m. PSD on YouTube, so hope to see you there.